Listen, we're continuing the series this week called Free. Everybody say free. Oh, I'm excited to preach this one, really, because I had, I had on Wednesday to go be with my wife and kids. I keep getting pictures of things like Chick-fil-A and Pop-Tarts, as I mentioned, and I'm going Wednesday to meet them and be with them. So for the next two Sundays, I won't be here. Um, however, next week is going to be great because we're going to have an interview. You're going to be able to watch an interview um, with a lady I know who is, uh, is in this ministry. She started a, her own ministry and wrote a book called Crossing to Freedom. So in lines with this series that we've been doing, uh, I'm going to be able to sit down with her and interview her, and you're going to be able to take part in that. So I'm excited about that. And the following week, Pastor Fiona is going to be with us. If you don't know, we're a part of a larger network called Destiny Ministries. And in Europe, we call it Destiny Europe. Pastor Liam and Fiona oversee Destiny Europe. And Fiona will be with us um, on the 29th. I think that's the Sunday. I may have my dates wrong. But next week, we're going to be showing showing an interview. And then Fiona will be with us. So excited about that. But today for me, I'm excited um, to preach this because this will be my last preach in the series free. So I came fired up. I came well rested because my kids are there in America. Thank you, kids, for allowing me to be rested today, and I'm excited to preach. Can we pray? And then I want to introduce to you the topic today. Father, we just thank you for your word. I thank you that it doesn't return to you void. Today, today, God, I just pray that you would speak through me, that I'm just a vessel for your word, for what you want to communicate. I pray today for true freedom. God, I pray today that this wouldn't be something we talk about and leave it there. But God, that we would be able to experience and encounter a true freedom in the life of Christ. God, that there would be big things and little things that we've been holding on to that would be released today. God, that this Sunday would mark even in certain people's lives a moment when they were freed from whatever it may be that's been holding them back from purpose. God, today we would all walk in a new type of freedom. We need you because I don't set people free. Only you set people free. And God, we all need freedom in different areas of our life today. So we're desperate for an encounter with you, not an encounter with a sermon title, not an encounter with preacher's notes, but God, an encounter with you. So Holy Spirit, more than anything, we invite you in this room. We invite you to be with us. We invite you to be wherever anyone is watching online right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. John chapter 5. I want to preach to you today on the topic, stepping into freedom. Say stepping into freedom. Online, say stepping into freedom. Amen. I got to talk to you, man. Are you just going to... I go off get a coffee or something. So I got to remind you that you're still here with us. John chapter 5. I'm going to start in verse 1. Read the story and then we'll talk about it in a moment. It says this. Sometimes, sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the sheep gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie. The blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. Can I just pause for a moment and tell you that it seems to me and this is my own experience, is that the longer you live with something hindering your life, the harder it is to be freed from. Because it becomes second nature. It becomes part of who you are. It becomes it becomes invisible. It becomes, this is just what I'm used to. 38 years he had been this way. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. 
You know, when, whenever there's something in our life that we need to be freed from, you oftentimes will feel isolated in that state. You will feel isolated and think, nobody else is dealing with this. I'm the only one. There's no one here. There's no one here to help me. And what the enemy would love to do is make you feel isolated. No one else is dealing with this. I, I'm too ashamed to tell anyone that I'm dealing with this. Because if he can keep you isolated, he can keep you there. No one is there to help me into the water, into the pool when it is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and he stepped into freedom. Stepping into freedom. I think sometimes we can often, we can, we have our mats. We have our things that we, we lie on. You know what I mean? You, you, you rely on, uh, is this okay? I'll do this. Can you see me? Can online see me? Hey, online. You see, we have our, we have our relationships that, that we rely on. We have our crutches that we, we rely on. You see, the, the invalid was, had been laying there at the pool 38 years. Well, 38 years he was, he was this way, but for some time he had been laying at the pool because he was relying on someone to bring him into the pool so that he could be healed. You see, he was relying on some source for his healing. And so often we will rely on we will rely on other people. You'll rely on your finances to get you out of some kind of state of feeling. You'll rely on finances to get you out of a state of maybe depression. Or you'll rely on, man, if I just can get, make an e extra money or get a bonus, then we could be better. You fill in the blank. We rely on if, if I could just if I could just be noticed by this person, then maybe we could have the job change we were looking for. We rely on the relationships. You know, it's funny because my wife and kids are in the U.S. right now. It's funny um, that I, I, I actually enjoy being alone sometimes. But it's different when you're home alone and you're used to kids running around and the wife. and the. I've come to rely on the noise. I've, I, it, it's become... It's become a mat for me. It's become, and then all of a sudden when everything is silent and I don't know what to do, you're alone with your own self and you're alone with your own problems and you're alone with your own thoughts and there is no noise anymore to drown it out. It's what you're lying, relying on. You like what I did there? You're relying on something for your healing you're relying on some source to be healed and he was sitting there for thir for for some time just wishing man I, I want to be free some of us rely on the church for our freedom you rely on the sunday morning message and the feeling that you get on sunday when you're around great community and you go out and have coffee and a cake and you feel good and you're relying on that to set you free can we talk today? You're relying on it to, to free you. Some of us go and we lay on the mat of our fantasy and we rely on some fantasy land. Some of us stray to even things like pornography and we stay in that fantasy world because we're trying to escape. We're relying on it to make us feel. We just need the noise. I want to live in the fantasy of my dreams of what could be instead of facing the reality of what is. We rely on things. But some of you are so good and so talented, you rely on yourself. And you think as soon as you get into a situation or as soon as you are dealing with some kind of internal thing, a, a thought, a, an addiction, a habit, a fear, 
whatever it may be that you're trying to get freed from, you rely on your own skill and your own ability and your own willpower to say, I can deal with this. If I just get more disciplined, then I can deal with this. If I just do this, uh, then I can get more disciplined and I can be free. What are you relying on? What are you relying on? Because what will happen is, is that when you rely on something, when you rely on a relationship, this is, what, this is why in your life you, you tend to get frustrated in relationships because you're relying on them and they're not meeting your expectations. We rely on the relationship and as soon as the relationship fails, you get frustrated, you get mad, you start carrying bitterness with you. And what happens is, is we'll end up being the victim. When you're bound in something, you will tend to take a victim mentality. You see the man who is lying on the mat at the pool, he says, hey, no one's here to help me. No one's here to help me. I'm just the poor victim of the tragic world that we live in. No one's here to help me. It's because of my upbringing that I act this way. You see, it's my dad's fault because he raised me this way. It's my mom's fault. That's the way my mom was. So so, so surely I'm that way. There's no way out of this. We become become the victim. I'm I'm not good enough. I'm not valuable enough. It's actually probably due to what I did in the past, what, I, what, 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 I, what I'm ashamed of. No one appreciates me anymore. I do so much for people, but nobody sees me. And we begin to take a victim mentality. If I just had enough, then I could. Today, I want to challenge us to stop lying on what was meant to be carried Jesus said sir pick up your mat and walk stop lying on what was meant to be carried stop relying on a relationship stop relying on a finance finances stop relying on affirmation from somebody else stop relying on value from an outside source stop relying on yourself to be free because the only one that can set us free is Jesus Oh, you wondered where I was going. The only person that can truly set us free is Jesus. For 38 years, it wasn't until he met Jesus at the side of a pool that he said, pick up your mat like it was easy. Like Jesus, Jesus, oh, it's just so, just pick up your mat and walk. 38 years I've been this way. He had a moment with Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can set us free. Luke chapter 4, watch this, verse 18. This this is what Jesus, Jesus is quoting the prophet Isaiah, reads a scroll. This is one of the first things he does in his ministry. Says the spirit of the Lord, he's quoting Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is on, I feel like Jesus was in the temple and he was reading this to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious people and he said, bam, the spirit of the Lord. And he's saying it with attitude. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of the sight for the blind. To set the oppressed, somebody say free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor Jesus's purpose is to set us free he said this is why I'm anointed is to set prisoners free this is why I came to set you free this is why I went to the cross this is why I endured the pain this is why I stepped out of perfection into imperfection and dealt with the emotions of man and dealt with the pain of my flesh and dealt with everything that you dealt with and walked perfectly so that I could set you free because because if you're not set free you can't have relationship with me and it was through salvation that he set us free freedom from sin 
Freedom from death that comes from sin. Freedom from shame. His purpose. He is the only one that can truly set us free. And if you've lived long enough you and, and you've tried this and you've tried that and you've tried this and you've tried this, you'll understand what I mean because you've tried other things to be free. And it just keeps going around and around. Because what goes up must come down. Spinning wheel got to go down. Second Corinthians three says this, but whenever when anyone, whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Not, not, not when anyone turns to their own devices or turns to an AA meeting or turns to Christian counseling, watch, or turns to the church. It doesn't say that. I'm a pastor. I really love the church. But it's the it's 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 the bride. It's the bride of the one who set you free. We'll go with that in another sermon. Not not, not when I turn to my relationships. Not when I turn to other people. Not when I turn to good advice. But when anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. It took me a while to figure out in Germany that if you don't luft and air out your house because there is no air condition, you will soon collect mold on the walls in certain places in your house. And so I learned that I needed fresh air in the house. I needed the fresh air to blow in. That's what the Holy Spirit does. That's what the Spirit of God does. Is when you come to the Lord and you say, here I am, you're lufting. You're, you're saying... You're saying, set me free. You're saying, set me free. It's the fresh wind of God that comes and blows upon your life and sets you free. It's an encounter with Jesus that brings real freedom. It's an encounter with the Spirit of God. Jesus, when I I have an encounter with Him at the pool, notice that the very thing, the very reason that the man came to the pool to be healed He was always on the outside of. He never got to get in. But it was on the outside of the very thing that he was relying on where he met Jesus. And some of you, I think, maybe are in a place thinking, I need to be there. And all you can focus on is, I need to get there. I need to reach that goal. I need to do that. And you keep striving and you keep trying. But can I tell you, it's in that place, on the side of the pool, where Jesus meets you outside of your expectations when you least expect it to say, I'm here to encounter you because I know that only an encounter with me can set you free. An encounter with Jesus will bring true freedom. This is the woman at the well. She had tried man after man. Woo! She was swiping right. Is it right or left? I don't know. Which is the positive or the negative. Anyways. Swiping right. But is right right? That's right. Anyways. Okay. She was, she was looking for affirmation from this guy and this guy and this guy. And it wasn't until she met the seventh guy named Jesus at the well. She needed an encounter with God. She needed an encounter with him. The, bl- the blind man, the woman with the issue of blood. It wasn't until I've tried this doctor. I've tried that doctor. I've given every resource. I'm coming to Jesus and I'm touching the hem of his garment. I need an encounter with him. And then, and then if you go into Acts, after Jesus was dead, buried, resurrected, go into the book of Acts, Peter and John are on their way to pray. They come to the gate called Beautiful, and there's a lame beggar there, and he's looking, relying on finances. Please give me money. Please give me something. I just need to get by. He was relying on something, but they said, hey, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus. He didn't need silver or gold. He didn't need finances. He didn't need food. He needed to walk. And he needed Jesus. It's an encounter with Jesus that brings real freedom.
you just look through Scripture, almost everyone who encountered Jesus was set free in different ways, was given purpose, except for most of the religious leaders who didn't turn to him. They were trying to accuse him. It was when people turned to him that they were set free. John 3, 8 says this, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Jesus is the truth. He says, I, I am the truth. I'm the way. I'm the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the truth. It is the truth. It is Jesus. It is the truth that sets you free. It is the living word named Jesus, the word that became flesh, the truth. There's every, everybody's, I'm just speaking my truth. I'm speaking my truth. I'm going to do, I'm going to do me. You do you. This is my truth. That's your truth. That's great. You have your truth. You have that truth. But there is only one truth that sets you free. It is the word of God made manifest and his name is Jesus. It is the truth that sets you free. The truth will reveal the lies that you've been lying on. The truth will reveal the lies that you've been lying on. You're not good enough. You're always going to be this way. You're never going to amount to anything. I know they got free from that, but you'll never be that way. You were born this way. You're dealing with this for the rest of your life. You'll never make it. You're going to live in poverty. You can try all you want, but you're not good enough. The lies that say you need to be afraid and anxious about everything. But when the truth comes, the Bible says it's like a double-edged sword. And what it does is it separates truth from lie. And when God's truth comes, this is why, this is why I say, Hey, read your Bible. It's really easy, you know? It's simple. It's simple for me to say that. It sounds very Sunday school, but gosh, if you could read the Word of God, I'm telling you, when you read it, you start recognizing and realizing truth. And when you realize truth, you realize what's a lie. You realize who you're not. Uh, Matthew McConaughey, in his book, he wrote, he said, listen, find, discovering your identity is a lot more about finding out who you're not discovering who you're not and I love this I experienced this in my life when I began to read God's word you know what he began to show me first was not exactly who I was he showed me who I wasn't he had to get rid of the lies they said I was gonna I was never gonna amount to anything that I don't have purpose truth reveals the lies that you've been lying on. you don't need that anymore you don't need that to feel okay, to be normal. You don't need to worry about every little thing. You don't need to plan for every worst case scenario and stay up at night. You don't need the mat anymore. You don't need what you've been lying on. Truth will set you free. The question for us today is what do we do with it? What do we do with it? You've been given You've been given truth. You've been given a key to freedom. What will you do with it? What will you do? It's Jesus who sets us free. And this is my favorite, John 8, 36. And worship team, you can come. I'm going to start closing in a moment. It says this, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. If the sun sets you free, you'll be free someday? No. If the sun sets you free, you'll be free for a month? Oh, come on. If the sun sets you free, you'll be free for a year? If the sun sets you free, you'll be free. You'll be free until you, until you stop going to church? If the sun sets you free, you'll be free indeed. Freedom is a finished product. 
That's why Jesus on the cross said it is finished. It's a finished product. That doesn't mean you always step into it. But freedom is a, it's, it's a finished product. You may not always step into your freedom. But it is finished. When the sun sets free, you are free indeed. But so often we want to go back to the mat. So often, I mean, what if the what if the the man who was healed said, you know, I'm really bored today. This walking's got me a little tired. Ran out of Netflix shows to watch, so maybe you know I'll just go back down to the pool and take my mat. <laughs> You know, get a little sun. It'd be a little crazy, you know? But so often we do the same thing. We, he sets us free from something and we like to go back. Because it was comfortable there. We, made, we began to make friends with our map. We were like one, you know? It was like the magic carpet on Aladdin. It was like tight. And we try to go back to the thing that he freed us from. Pick up what you've been lying on. Pick up what you've been relying on. We need to pick up the map and walk and step into freedom. Don't go back to the lies. Don't go back to the addiction. Come on, I don't know if I'm preaching to you, but I'm preaching to me. Don't go back. Don't go back. See, what I used to rely on, what used to be holding me, now I'm holding it. What used to keep me down, I got a hold of it now. I, I started to read this patch. I said, why didn't he leave his mat? He didn't need it anymore. He wasn't going to, what? He, if he needed a rug at home, go to Ikea, man. Like, you don't need it. Like, I, I, I thought, Jesus, what are you doing? Tell him to leave the mat. Why did you tell him to pick it up? And I felt like God began to speak to me and say, hey, listen, just because you're freed from something don't, doesn't mean you forget it. It actually becomes a testimony of God's goodness in your life. It becomes a testimony and a launching pad of your ministry, of what God wants to do in your life. It becomes a place to say, hey, look, look what God brought me from. I used to be stuck on this thing, and now I'm walking around with it. It used to be a mat I laid on. Now it's a flag of freedom and victory of G in Jesus' name. <laughs> I just wonder. I'm filling in the blanks a little bit. I wonder if he took it home. I'm wondering if he took it home and he, he just kind of at his doorstep. I wonder if it became a welcome mat at his door. And people, people walking into his house. That's a nice mat. Where'd you get that? Oh, let me tell you about what Jesus did. Oh, let me tell you about a testimony. Let me tell you about my, how good God is and how, how good God, what he did. Because so often we forget what he did. So often we move on. We've been set free. But, oh, he wants to use it as a testimony. He wants to use the thing that you were set free from, from for a testimony of his goodness. And, and, and every time he walked into his house, the very thing that was, he was lying on, he's now walking on. And I just felt like maybe the man was like, Woo, get under my feet, Satan. You see, you see, my marriage used to be broken, you could say, and then you could say, but now God is using me to minister to couples. You see what I'm saying? You see where I'm going? I used to be addicted to pornography, but now God is using me to set other people free. I used to be addicted to to affirmation and adoration and so I was so busy because I did whatever my boss and everyone else said and I couldn't slow down and I was working for value 
But now I've got boundaries in my life and I spend time with my family. I spend time with them. And I mean, I used to come, I came from a broken family. I came from a broken home and it was almost inevitable that I was going to repeat the same things. Oh, but now my family is thriving. I got kids and they're growing in the Lord and they're learning and they're being trained up and I'm not repeating some of the same mistakes. And you can say, man, I used to come from a poverty mentality. I used to come from from fear and anxiety. Oh, but now I'm not afraid anymore because the Spirit of God is in me and the one who is in me is greater than the one who is in the world. And now I'm not afraid to step into my purpose and my calling. So I'm stepping right in. Come on, get under my feet, Matt. You could be a testimony right there, but I got a nice Serta mattress in there I'm going to start laying on. You need to talk to your past like that sometimes. Stepping into freedom. Come on, say I'm stepping into freedom. I remember when I was, what was I, 20, 20 years old. And maybe some of you heard part of my testimony, but I, I was relying on, see, I was relying on a relationship. There was a girl I was dating. I was relying on, I was, I was about ready to propose. Crazy, I know. Thank you, Megan, for coming into my life. I was getting ready to propose. I knew she was the one. And then she, then she cheated on me. Ready for my sad country western song. She got me a dog right before Christmas. See, country songs was always a train, a dog, some beer, and a woman, and a truck. No trains, everything else. Had the truck, had the dog. There's a dog. Say dog. Anyway, she got me a dog before Christmas, and then dumped me. Cheated on me, dumped me. And so, if you've ever been, if you've ever been cheated on or dumped, then you know you're like eating bowls of ice cream and watching soap operas, and you're like. But I was so torn up because it was what I was relying on. It's because I was relying on a relationship for validation. I was relying on other relationships. I was busy every weekend at a party. Because if I could just stay busy, then I didn't have to be alone with myself. Because I didn't like myself. And then all of a sudden, uh, my dog gets ran over in the road. I, mean, I had a trailer too, so it's really good country for us. I had my trailer. Double wide. And my dog gets run over in the road. It sounds nonchalant now, but I was crying. I pull my truck to the back, and I'm burying this dog. And all of a sudden, you remember when you used to make these mixtapes on CDs? You know, like you got a road trip, like road trip 2000, 2007, road trip, mixtape. I had a little Wayne on there. I had some country music on there. And then for some reason, I had the song God of Wonders on there. You know what I'm talking about? God of Wonders. And then that song came on, and then I hit the little repeat button on my, on my truck. And it just kept playing. And so I'm just trying to give you a visual image. I'm, I'm back there burying my dog to the soundtrack of God of Wonders while I'm drinking a natural light, crying. Oh, God. God of Wonders. <laughs> God of wonders beyond the galaxy, you are holy. You know what I'm like? And I go into my bedroom, and I, I kneel down at my bed. First thing I did, actually, was is I start, I start calling people. Nobody's answering. It's right before Christmas, too, by the way. Nice time to break up with your cheat on your boyfriend. It's almost as bad as Valentine's calling my friends. They're all home. Everybody's doing holiday stuff. Nobody's answering. You see, what I was trying to do was, is I was trying to rely on someone else. Somebody just please talk to me. Somebody I needed. I had nothing else left. And it was in that moment I said, I, I went back to some roots that I had because I grew up in church. And I said, no one else is going to talk to me. God, I'll go to church every Sunday if you give her back to me. 
God said, listen, you have relied. This is the, probably the most loudest I've ever heard God speak to my spirit. I didn't hear his voice audibly, but it almost could have been. He said, he said, Daniel, you've been relying on everything else except me. And now this is where you put yourself. You've backed yourself into a corner. And in that moment, I said, oh, God, I'm going to rely on you. I'm going to trust in you. That was my moment of salvation in a double wide trailer after burying my dog and giving my life to Jesus right there, not even knowing what Christianity really looked like, but just saying, I've had an encounter with you. I was relying on something, but now it's gone. Now it's faded. Now it's momentary. It's not eternal. And I've had an encounter with Jesus. And that's what changed it all. Was when I said, I'm done relying on that. I'm going to rely on you. Can you stand to your feet with me today? See, when you're when you're alone with yourself, this man with the, on the mat, when you're alone with yourself, no one else was there to help me up. No one else was there to help me up. But in fact, it's the times that you're alone with yourself, you're the most vulnerable. And it can be the most scariest times when you're so vulnerable and you're so weak and it's easy to give into fear, it's easy to give into temptation, it's easy to give into a habit, but it can also be the most valuable times because when you're most vulnerable, God can encounter you there. In my vulnerability, I need to turn to Him. Because I'm stepping into freedom. Today, maybe for some watching online or in the room, maybe, maybe today you're like me. Maybe you've never said to God, I'm, I'm, I'm relying on you. I'm stepping into a relationship with you. I'm stepping into freedom by stepping into that relationship with you. I'm not relying on that anymore but I'm relying on you. Jesus, you're the Lord of my life. Maybe the decision that I made when I was 20 years old in a double wide trailer on the floor next to my mattress is the decision that you need to make today to say, Jesus, I'm stepping towards you. And if you're watching online, uh, we're going to have a QR code that pops up on the screen. In the room, every eye closed. If you're making the decision today to follow Jesus for the first time, I want you to pray this with me because the Bible says when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. It's a moment like I had where I said, Jesus, I, I didn't have a scripted way to say it. I, don't, I, I just said, Jesus, I want you. I don't know what it looks like. This is crazy. But I'm in. Maybe today, just under your breath, out loud, you want to say, Jesus, I'm in. You're the Lord of my life. If that's you today and you're making that decision, greatest decision you'll ever make, say it. Jesus, I am in. I'm stepping into a relationship with you. I thank you, Jesus, that the old is gone and the new has come. I know I won't be perfect, but I want a relationship with the one who is. You be the Lord of my life. All eyes closed today. If that was you and you made that decision for the first time, or maybe you're rededicating your life, coming back to him, just a hand in the air one time and then back down to say, that was me. That was me. Amen. Online, again, a QR code is going to pop up on the screen. We want to give you resources. We'd love for you to fill that out. We give you resources. It's going to be here in the room as well to be able to walk this journey with Jesus. Maybe... Maybe some of you have been relying on someone or something. Maybe you've identified your mat today. Maybe you identified the thing that you've been relying on, that you've been lying on, the lie, the relationship, the, the crutch. Today, let's make decisions to leave our mats, to pick them up as a testimony of what God can do in our life for other people. Father, today, just in closing, I pray. You know, if that's you today and you've said, man, I've got a mat, small mat, big mat. I'm, I'm, I'm picking it up today. Can you just lift your hands in the air? I've got some. I've got some I'm going to let go of today. If you want to let go of some mats for me today, let's do it together. Online, just lift your hands in the air like you're surrendering a mat today.
I'm surrendering something to him. I'm surrendering my fears. I'm surrendering my anxiety. I'm surrendering, I'm surrendering my need for validation. Because I get validation from heaven. God, today we surrender. We surrender what we've been holding on to. We've been, we surrender what we've been relying on. We surrender what we've been lying on. We surrender, God, the fear, the anxiety, the addiction, the, the thoughts. We surrender, God, the, the constant nagging. We surrender the shame and condemnation that tries to hold us down. And Jesus, right now, we desire, we say we want an encounter with you. It's not even a prayer, but to, a prayer that can change. We want an encounter with you. Jesus, meet us today. We thank you for that encounter. That we would Today would mark a day we're free in different areas of our life because we had an encounter with you. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And Holy Spirit, you are here today. We acknowledge you are here today. You're moving in our midst. You're moving in our life. You're moving in our hearts. You're breaking chains. You're breaking bondage. You're breaking fear. You're breaking anxiety. You're breaking addiction. You're breaking lust. You're breaking, God, the things that are holding us back in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Can we give God a hand clap of praise today? Amen and amen.